That's right. Now you're gonna bleed. Maybe. I don't know. I did it! I got a bleed kill! And I might not have gotten that bleed kill without the shiv! Welcome to Bad Weapon Academy, where we take a look at the worst weapons TF2 has to offer, and I show you how to best utilize them. When it comes to sniper melees, it's pretty much no contest. The bushwhacker wins. Between how easy it is to apply Jurati onto not just one enemy, but a whole herd of them, and the insane damage it'll put out with no downsides to its damage or swing speed, it's pretty clearly Sniper's best melee, and one half of one of the most imbalanced interactions in the entire game. It's not that the stock Kukri is bad, it's just that with very little reason not to run Jurati, and it doing so much damage, it feels like a straight upgrade as long as Jurati, or even the Cleaner's Carbine, is your secondary of choice. But, what if you want to do more damage than the stock Kukri, without being complete bullshit. Well, my friend, in that case, use the Shansha, I guess. Uh, it's okay. It can help you out sometimes. Oh yeah, and there's also this thing. Yeah, the Travelman's Shiv. This is arguably one of the most useless weapons in the entire game. Why is that? Well, it won't be hard to find out. So let's get into it. The Travelman's Shiv is one of Sniper's few melee options. And like his other melee unlocks, it has very simple stats. Your melee damage is halved in exchange for 6 seconds of bleed damage against whoever you hit with it. So what this means is that your melee hit will now deal a measly 33 base damage, and your random crits go from basically invalidating Sniper's close range weakness with a dice roll, which is spectacular game design, to maybe killing a light class after a few seconds, if they're not near a health pack. Oh, but it can still one-shot kunai spies, assuming they don't have a backstab, so that's nice. Uh, so can literally anything else in the game, though. Also, of course, he's going to have a fucking backstab as the goddamn kunai. But, of course, the main draw is that 6 seconds of bleed damage. This amounts to 48 extra damage, or 60 extra damage if it's mini crit boosted, which is very relevant on Sniper considering two of his secondaries and one of his primaries can provide him with mini crits on all weapons. Now, if you're using one of those weapons, you might be wondering why you wouldn't instead use the melee that turns those mini crits into full crits, and to that I say... Anyways, this means if you get full bleed, your damage will look something like this. 81 damage with a normal hit, 104 damage if both the melee hit and the bleed damage are mini crit boosted, a random crit with bleed will do 146 damage, and if you get a random crit with mini crit boosted bleed, you'll do 158 damage to the enemy. This puts the shiv in a very interesting spot, where without crits, it's technically stronger than the stock melee, and just as strong as a boosted shansha hit right out of the gate. But when crits are involved, it's a different story. And it fails to cross the damage threshold to kill medics and gunslinger engineers, unless you're mini crit boosted. And that's after 6 full seconds of waiting for the effect to run its course. As Tom Petty once said, the waiting is the hardest part. When you're a sniper, every millisecond that someone is up in your face counts. By equipping the shiv, you're basically saying that you don't plan on surviving any of your close range fights to begin with, and have resigned yourself to dying after hitting someone who gets in your face maybe once if you're lucky. Because as long as the bleed runs its course, that's more damage than you'd do with the stock Kukri in one hit. And hey, for mere mortal snipers who can't hit those insane close range quickscopes, or, you know, insane close range huntsman headshots, which are apparently perfectly fine literally just because they're a projectile, even if that projectile is only on screen for a fraction of a second and has an extremely generous hitbox, or for those saint snipers who don't run Jurati Bushwhacka out of principle, that's an understandable position to take, but you're honestly better off just rolling with the Kukri because a random crit is going to secure you a kill and save your life far more often than Bleed is going to get you a posthumous kill. After getting 75 kills with the Shiv, only 6 of them are posthumous for me. Now, if you play on servers without random crits enabled, you might be saying, 
Well, that's no big deal, because without random crits, it's effectively a straight upgrade to stock. And you might have a point if it wasn't so easy to get rid of the bleed effect. Now granted, it's not nearly as easy to get rid of as Afterburn, but health packs, medics, and dispensers will still ensure that you're not going to take advantage of that extra damage nearly as often as you want. Turning your damage range without random crits from 81 to 104 to 33 to 104. That's way less reliable for a class who needs reliable damage if he's going to survive a close range fight. Not to mention, let's say you get into an engagement with a Demo Knight. You're probably going to lose this engagement if he gets into melee range, especially without a one-shotting random crit on your side and with a guaranteed crit on his side. But it might be worth it to get a bleed on a target that healthy, right? No! He charges away back to safety and removes the bleed effect with the charge at the same time. Because I guess he's charging so fucking fast that the air molecules around him just seal his wounds closed or something. And I've saved the worst for last, and that's Spy Cloak. A spy is easily the class you're going to engage in a melee fight with the most often, unless you're extremely dedicated to Carbine Sniper Knight. Now, melee fighting a spy in the first place is already a bad idea because of trick stabs or just bullshit face stabs that spy mains like to pretend were trick stabs to protect their egos, but actively choosing to elongate that fight for as much as possible is downright psychotic, which is true of any class, but especially bad for a class that's going to snowball off of your death like a spy is. Like, okay, let's pretend this is an alternate universe where not every spy in the fucking world uses the kunai and is always at 200 health because there is no god. With the stock kukri, you only need to hit the spy twice in quick succession or once with a random crit and he's dead. Risky, but simple. In the best case scenario, the fight shouldn't last longer than a couple of seconds, and it might even be over before the spy realizes it's begun. With the Bushwhacker and Jirati, you coat the spy in P, which makes escape by cloaking no longer an option, then one-shot him, and then do the same thing 20 seconds later once your Jirati is recharged and the spy has respawned, because this combo is extremely balanced and very well thought out. With the Tribalman Shiv, you hit the spy, wait around 6 seconds for the bleed to run its course, then hit him again, and then wait for him to bleed out AGAIN, because even after the initial bleed runs its course, a regular melee hit still isn't enough to finish him off. You need even more bleed time. By hitting the spy multiple times in quick succession, you are racking up more immediate damage, but you're also putting yourself more at risk of getting stabbed, and because bleed effects from the same weapon don't stack, you're not doing any extra bleed damage. Meaning, by hitting the spy while he's still bleeding, you're effectively resetting the bleed timer and wasting any damage that was left still building up. Meaning, the more you hit an enemy with this weapon in a realistic fight, the worse you're making its damage output compared to any of the other sniper melees. And this applies to everything you fight, not just spies. Let's look at it this way. If you hit an enemy in quick succession two times with the stock kukri, you will do 130 damage to them in about a second, just enough to kill a light class. With the tribalman's shiv, then that's 124 damage if you hit him twice as fast as possible and let the bleed completely run its course after an additional 6 seconds. Or rather, if the enemy lets the bleed run its course. In that time, you could have killed about 6 more light classes with the Kukri. Now, the obvious thought here is that you're not using it in a 1v1 against the spy, but rather you're using it to track down the spy after he's gone invisible to assist your team or your other weapons. Which, hey, is a nice thought and can actually be helpful sometimes, but not nearly to the degree you'd think. Ever since the gunmetal update, spies have a 20% damage resistance while cloaked and a 50% reduction in debuff timers. And in Meet Your Match, he was given the same base speed as Medic, meaning if it's a chase you're getting into, 
you likely won't be able to catch up with him unless he lets you do so. This means if you manage to catch up with a spy and hit him while he's invisible with the shiv, you will do a pitiful 50 damage compared to your normal 81 after all the bleed runs out, and you'll only deal 3 seconds of bleed damage compared to your normal 6. So you're not only doing way less damage, so little damage you're not even going to be able to kill an invisible kunai spy without a stab under his belt, but it means tracking down the spy is going to be much more difficult than if you had the full 6 seconds to work with. Now if you or a teammate can follow up on that in the 3 short seconds the spy is going to be invisible, great, but it still utterly pales in comparison to Jirati, which is one, not nearly as finicky as TF2's notoriously janky melee, two, far more visible than the bleed effect, three, is much better for supporting anyone else who shoots at the spy since the effect is mini crits on hit instead of a simple DOT, four, combos perfectly with a melee weapon that will one-shot the spy regardless of the cloak resistance, unless he's using the kunai and has 200 health because of course he fucking does, this is the universe we live in and there is no god, and five, lets you use any of the actual fucking melee weapons that are good for close range self-defense in any other situation besides just fighting spies. And you might be saying that what it's good for is tracking down and damaging a spy who pulls out his dead ringer. And in theory, you'd be right. But in practice, activating the dead ringer also nullifies the bleed effect. Just like a demonite charge. Oh yeah, and just like a backstab from the kunai will do. So if you get in a fight with that kunai spy, you'd better fucking hope you win. And if the spy is using both the kunai and the dead ringer, which of course he is because it's the universe we live in, spies share one collective brain cell, there is no god, then there's no hope for you. So it sounds like there's basically no situations in which the shiv isn't completely outclassed, especially by the Jurati bushwhacker combo. And you would be correct, but that doesn't make it entirely useless. Its effectiveness against spies can still help you if your secondary weapon is not Jirati, because at that point there's just no benefit to not using the Bushwhacker or using the Jirati itself to coat the spy. And if you ask me, the best of these secondaries to pair with the Shiv is the Razorback. Sniper's other, other, other middle finger to spies. I don't know, maybe the carbine counts in there too. Anyway, the Razorback can certainly act as an effective spy deterrent, but it's effectively useless in actively combating the spy. And with the Bushwhacker, there's no benefit to running these two weapons together, and in fact you'll lose out on the random crits of the other melees. But, with the Shiv, you can still use Bleed in a supportive manner to help your teammates track down the spy, or track him down yourself. So you can not only keep the spies from backstabbing you, but also help to kill them once you've caught them out. This even makes engaging in a melee fight with a spy to begin with a lot more feasible, since he can't try to trick stab you without crippling himself for a few seconds by breaking your Razorback. Now the obvious problem with this is the obvious problem with the Razorback in general. Spy has a gun. Now a lot of spy players either don't realize this or just don't care because the only reason they play this game is to get footage for their backstabbing montages interspliced with random footage from k -On. but if you happen to run into a headshot happy ambassador spy or someone who just knows how to back up away from you while you run at them with your melee then you're honestly better off either switching loadouts or switching classes. But hey! Can't get free health off me if you can't backstab me, you weeb ass interp abusing kunai fuck! Look, I wouldn't be so goddamn bitter about it if any spy in the universe used literally any other knife ever. I can't even fucking remember the last time I saw a spicicle. However, another issue that pops up is that the Razorback being a spy deterrent means you won't get much chance to fight spies in the first place unless it's on their terms with a gun. If a spy chooses not to engage with you, then you have to run around like an idiot holding your class's weakest melee 
just sort of hoping you run into one. This set is at its most useful when you're playing around your team and are able to catch out a spy who tries for a backstab on your nearby teammates. If you're off on your own, you'll just end up being revolver bait, or at best, a preventative measure that has no chance of seeing what you're preventing. But that's the story with the Razorback in general. Now, while the Razorback is definitely the best in terms of synergy, I think the SMG also deserves special mention. The stock SMG can pair decently with the Shiv if you're good at tracking. By getting the initial hit on a spy, you can help to offset both the low damage of the shiv attack itself and the shortened debuff time by just keeping your crosshair on the spy with the SMG and following his movements as best you can, all while stacking the bleed damage with your SMG volley which can drain any enemy's health pretty quickly. He might still be able to juke you out, but it can give you a lot more wiggle room to work with and potentially secure a kill on a spy who would have gotten away if you were just using bleed on its own. You could also use the carbine to more easily spy check and get those mini crit bleeds, but again, if you're cursing yourself by running with the carbine already, then make life easier on yourself and just use the bushwhacker, because for as jank as the carbine is, at least Sniper Knight is actually fun when it works. Yes! That was sick! Oh, that was fucking perfect! Thank you, Medic! Unfortunately, that's kind of it though. The Shiv isn't a terrible tool to use against spies, but I can say the same thing about the Razorback and I can also just as easily list many similar problems. It's very easy for the spy to circumvent with his gun, and more importantly, spy is the only thing it's effective against. I get into melee fights more often than the average sniper because I tend to play more aggressively, and I can only think of the intro clip as the single non-spy kill that I got with the shiv that I couldn't have gotten just as easily with the stock kukri. But I can definitely think of plenty of kills I missed out on because I wasn't using stock. It's that bad. So, what can we do? Well, I think there's a few routes you could go down with this thing. A full reversion of the weapon's core design is an easy route to take, since it's so antithetical to how long you want a close range sniper fight to last, but let's limit ourselves to sticking with the bleed concept. One thing you could do is get rid of the damage penalty altogether and turn this into the sniper's version of the Boston Basher, where missing will cause you to damage and inflict bleed on yourself. This would add a much larger level of risk versus reward to the weapon, especially on a class like Sniper, where you not only have a low health pool limiting your mistake allowance, but having a DOT effect applied to you can also ruin your aim for several seconds. It would also bring your maximum damage with the full bleed effect up to 113 or 148 if you're mini crit boosted, which is a lot more impactful. Meanwhile, over on my rebalance server, link in the description, we've added a few new effects to the existing design. For starters, we've increased the bleed duration to 8 seconds, added a speed boost on hit, making this technically the only sniper weapon in the game with some kind of movement tech, and the hit and bleed will pierce damage resistances like Spy Cloak, and others like the Battalion's backup. This makes it much better at its job of being a spy tracker, and with the speed boost, you can either use it for a quick hit and run getaway, or to keep up the pace with your target to more easily apply more bleed, or to follow up with an SMG volley. It's a weapon that might need a few more tweaks, but the version we have is definitely an improvement over the vanilla shiv. And that just about wraps things up. The shiv is definitely the worst of Sniper's entire weapon arsenal, and it's one of the worst weapons in the game. The classic and Sydney Sleeper will still do solid long range damage if you're patient enough to wait on the charge, and even the Carbine has its moments of absolute Sniper Knight carnage. But the Shiv is really just pigeonholed into this anti-spy niche almost as much as the Razorback is, and I'm not exactly a fan of that weapon either. So their synergy isn't something that really speaks to me, but that's what's best for it right now. So go out there and encourage spies to donate to their local blood drive and tell them Fish sent you. <laughs> Oh, funny ragdoll.
Oh, right. Um, we have a video game to play. Oh, please. I can't believe it, guys. The spies, <laughs> the imposter. And I get. Oh yeah.